watching The Joe Cronin Show. All right, what's up, wrestling fans? It's uh, Joe Cronin uh, with Maria, former WWE diva Maria. Currently uh, on the ROH roster, right? You're still with ROH, right? Yes, I am. Of course. Been with them for about three and a half years now. Why in the world couldn't Total Divas happen when you were still in WWE? Because I think you would have just been perfect on that show. And I understand you brought the idea up previously. I did, yeah. I actually um, have the emails back and forth between Stephanie and I. And Stephanie was also trying very hard to get it going because we had such a good group. I mean, we had a fantastic group of girls. Um, you know, Everybody from Beth Phoenix to Michelle McCool, we, we just had a tremendous group. And um, it would have really worked, I think, with all the different personalities. Um, but it didn't happen. Um, I got to do Celebrity Apprentice instead, um, which I think is fantastic. Um, made a lot of money for charity. So, yeah, yeah I think about that, too. And um, I actually talked to WWE about Total Divas about, um, what is it, two years ago now? Um, they they it came to me, asked me if I wanted to be a part of the show. I said, yeah, I definitely would. Um, it was me, Michelle McCool, and um, Kelly Kelly. Or, sorry, me. Uh, Maurice and then Kelly Kelly, yeah. um, the three of that us, they were asking to come by and do that show. And then for some reason, it all fell through. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I was definitely interested in it. No, that's really cool. A lot of those people, and, and just it's so it's amazing to me now. Um, I think it's kind of always been this way, so I really shouldn't be shocked. But sometimes it's amazing to me how the Divas Division, uh, a woman's division, Sometimes that I still can't say Divas Division, but Divas Division turns around. You know how quick the yeah. turnaround is? These girls, mm -hmm. all the girls you mentioned that you were involved with, almost everybody's gone or they are gone, you know, yeah. at this point. The only ones that are still there is Rosa, uh, right. Layla's still there, Alicia Fox came in right at the tail end of when I was there, right. um, and then Natty, of course. Yep, yeah, right. I think, uh, yeah, and some of them, like, have just been coming back now, like, you know, have been off and on. Like, Alicia Fox mm -hmm. is, uh, I, I've, I've really enjoyed what she's uh, oh, done yeah. recently. How is she's she working? She's a fantastic wrestler. I don't remember, I don't, well, I don't remember too many times you being in the ring with her. Were you, but you were, you were in the ring with her a lot, right? I was in the ring with her a few times. Um, mostly it was just those, like, six man schmoz things that they had us <laughs> do, but, um, I got to work with her down at NXT. So when right. I got to work with her there, it was actually a tag match. So I got to see how she works and stuff. And she's really good. So And she's only improved since you know I was there. But um, I only got to work with her a few times at WWE. How's it... Um, now, a, a few people... I mentioned this earlier to them and they didn't know this. So I'm just... I'll bring it up now for anybody who doesn't know. Um, how has it been with New Japan Pro Wrestling? Have you done? You've done some stuff with New Japan, right? Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah, and we went over and um, we did the Saibu Dome, Saibu Dome show right. um, last year, and that was at the very tail end of the G1 tournament. And then uh, that was just a huge show. I think there was something like eighteen thousand people there. Yeah. Um, huge show, big fanfare with that. Um, in Japan, they're the number one wrestling company. Right. So for me, it was like being back at WWE, you know, yeah. with the, the big fanfare. Um, and then we went over and we did the tag tournament, which was fantastic. Um, it was 19 days. Um, we did, I think it was 16 shows while we were there. Right. Um, so it was a lot of shows, but it was so much fun. And um, I can't wait to go back. How was the crowd? Uh, how would you compare the crowd over there to the U.S. crowd? And because some of those crowds you mentioned were were not televised, right? Uh huh. Yeah. How, how I mean, the some of them were just house show crowds. Um, they're large crowds. Uh, they're completely different than the WWE crowds. They wait for you to do something and then they clap. There's nothing. Right. There's no like in between where they're yelling random stuff at you. There's <laughs> either they're clapping for you or booing you, but it's always in between the movements. How, what do you think about the? Uh, I'm going all over the place, but what do you think about the the WWE crowd now? Because it's uh, it's interesting. It's it's actually very. I don't know if you have you been watching the product a lot. WWE. I, I do sometimes. Right. Sometimes because some of my friends are now from Ring of Honor are starting to get on WWE TV, right. so I'll watch them. And then I also am really interested in what they're doing with Paige and with the girls' division. So I, I kind of watch every now and again yeah. um, as my friends are going. I find the crowd very interesting. 
because they definitely yeah. have their own heart and soul right now. They think that yeah. um, they're a part of the show. And, you know, in essence... Oh, oh, are, we are a part of it. Huh? They are a part of the show, aren't they? Like I was going to say. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> before I was uh, cut off there. Um, they are a part of the show, and they, in essence, have always been a part of the show. Right. It's just right now they are taking a completely different opinion mm -hmm. as to what the guys are trying to direct right. and what WWE is trying to direct. And um, you've seen that in the past, especially with the Philadelphia crowds with John Cena. Right. But now it's throughout the entire show, uh, which is incredibly interesting. Um, they really have uh, found their own voice. Now that's a, and that's an interesting thing that you brought up too with it because we've had uh, battles on my show about this. Um, I've had fights with other podcasters. We're all a bunch of dorks, uh, ba <laughs> basically is what it comes down to. Um, but I've had fights with people about this, uh, specifically uh, another channel, uh, Aaron Rift, who, who, who mentions a lot of times in his show that it's the crowd hijacking the show. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know, well, I think it's just the crowd expressing their opinion. They don't want to see somebody. Uh, they're, they're tired of it. Uh, it's PG right now, so... Um, the, I mean, the, I can't remember a time when I was this frustrated watching it. I mean, granted, I'm, listen, I'm 30 years old, so it's, uh, you know, the veil is, is, is gone. You know what I mean? I, it's, I'm jaded. I'm very jaded. And I think that you're, you're getting the noobs, the new people who just started watching wrestling, who will watch for two to three years, like someone obsessively, like a band you did in high school or something, and then get over it. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the kids who grew up on it, who are still into it, who are in their teens and 20s early 20s and then you've got people like me who you know watched I watched since WrestleMania 4 is when I started watching and watched the it become the attitude era uh, and, and now you're kind of like we're they're taking a step back to be a little more family orientated mm -hmm. uh, you know there's no clear-cut guy right now Cena's you know kind of you know he's just getting older at this point and people are getting have been tired of him for a little while and now it seems like they're pushing Reigns, and now people aren't happy with that. So it's divided the crowd now, mm -hmm. where people want Roman Reigns to be, uh, you know, to get his chance. But then there's another part of the crowd who think they're shoving Roman Reigns down our throat, and both mm -hmm. those two are clashing. And it's interesting. I'm I'm in the middle there, and uh, but I but I do understand people being frustrated. But at the same time, like you said, there's a certain point when, hey, you know, take it easy, you know, let them do their thing, and, mm -hmm. and the, the fans want to just become part of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they they have always been kind of the guiding factor when it comes to what we're doing in the ring. I mean, that's why they say work the crowd, because <laughs> right. you're trying to work the crowd. Um, but it's, it's funny because you also find it in the school system right now. Um, people are, you know, students are speaking up and saying what they want to learn and what they want to see. And that's never really happened before. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you look at it as more of a general outlook look on society rather than just on wrestling, um, people are speaking up and saying what they want. Yeah. People are saying, no, I'm not going to take this anymore. Um, it was, there was a, uh, some research on some news site that I seen that, you know, if you if you go to a class right now and you ask everybody in the class, like, are you planning on being in the same job for the next 30 years? Most people will say no. Right. Most people are going to change jobs. They're going to change their opinions. And that never used to be the case. So, yes, in wrestling, they're hijacking us. <laughs> but I think that overall, as a society, mm -hmm. we're speaking up and saying exactly what we want. And that's because of social media. Because you're no longer the one person just standing up and saying, no, that's not what I want. Now you have social media to defend your position. And you have the people around you in the crowd when you go to a WWE event and you know that they're all thinking the same thing that you are. So yeah. you're not afraid to speak up and say, no, that's not what I want. It used to be that you had no idea what everybody else was thinking in the crowd. Right. Because all you knew is when you got to the show. Now you know before you even get there. So right. um, guys are having to learn how to work differently. Right. And uh, Triple H and Stone Cold kind of mentioned it in their podcast recently when they said kayfabe is dead. And then they basically talked. I couldn't... My head... Old school me, my head wanted to explode with some of the stuff they were bringing up in that pot, but I loved it. There was half of me was like loving this, and the other half of me was like cringing because they were just saying everything. And uh, yeah. but then the whole theme was kind of kayfabe's dead. And you're right; they have to do different things because everybody already knows it going in. Yeah, they do most um, definitely. And 
I don't, I don't necessarily believe that kayfabe needs to be dead when you're mm -hmm. watching the show. Right. I think that it should be to where it's like watching any other TV show. Yeah. That you, you know it's not real. You, you don't have to believe that it's real. Right. But while you're watching it, we should be able to guide you down a path that makes you believe that what we're doing is real. Right. And I think those guys are the ones that are the best at their jobs. The Kevin Owens of the world are right. doing a great job of kind of uh, playing towards the fans, giving them exactly what they want, but still leading you down his path the way that he wants to go. And I think that Paul Heyman has done that for years. You know that it's a show, but, but you don't think that when you're watching him. When right. you're watching him, you believe in what he's saying. Yeah, I think that you're right about that, and the slack is a little bit, there's just less room to mess up now because of the fans will jump right on it. But those people that do it well, they do it that way. I'm glad that Kevin Owens, by the way, um, especially in that first NXT TakeOver where he came out, I was so happy. I loved that show. I loved the ending. It's stuff that, you know, ROH, uh, Ring of Honor, has been able to do for years. Um, mm -hmm. And now it's yeah. funny that WWE's kind of taken their own version of that. Yeah, they're uh, Ring of Honor with money. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> And, the, and it's unfortunate because they should get more money in Ring of Honor <laughs> because it's such a good product. And a lot of people, hopefully yeah, watching but, now. I mean, it's, it, WWE is a product that's tried and true and been around for a long time. Right. And so, of course, they have tons of money to spend right. on it. If I'm Sinclair Broadcasting, I'm looking at Ring of Honor saying, okay, we've only had you on television for a few years. You're making us a bit of money. You're putting out a good product. So I'm going to give you this amount. Then right. next year, I'm going to give you a little more. Then the year after that, I'm going to give you a little more. Because that's good business. Yeah. I mean, all these, you know, small indie companies come out and they're like, we're going to rule the world. You right. know, and they do all this stuff and they throw all their money at it. And guess what? In a year from now, you're gone. Right. So Ring of Honor is doing it right in that sense. It just sucks because you have WWE that has so much money and they could just be like, here you go, production, <laughs> t-shirts, blah, blah, blah. You know, we well, can't do that. What kills me sometimes when I watch uh, when I watch NXT is that I go, why why the heck sometimes why isn't TNA getting you know what I mean doing some of this and, and taking some of this because WWE can do it now they're they're seemingly uh, you know taking over with their smaller product you know mm -hmm. TNA should be able to do this yeah has it ever I know that that I I had to ask this question because every every single freaking person sent me the this damn question and i was like she probably gets this every damn second um and you i think for years you have tna why has you ever had any talks with tna i have had talks with them okay um they offer me good contracts mm -hmm. um you know it's it's tough because um i love the girls over there i think they're extremely talented i i find um some of the the guys over there extremely talented as well mm -hmm. But I like the vibe of Ring of Honor. Right. I like the idea of building people up. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of people just starting to peak in their careers. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's just a better feeling when I go to Ring of Honor. And, um, you know, TNA, they offer me good things. But um, that feeling in the Ring of Honor locker room, you can't get anywhere else. So I had to take that um, to into account when I made my, my decision. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that, and that's uh, has it come up multiple times where it's it, they've come back again and you've kind of made the same yeah. decision all over again? Uh huh. Yeah, probably the last right after WWE they came after me. Then everybody thought I was out of wrestling completely, and I thought right. I was too. Mm -hmm. um, but then I started kind of edging back into it, and then um, worked for Ring of Honor for about six months. Then TNA came back at me again. Worked, um, did a full year contract with Ring of Honor, came back at me again. I have a lot of friends that work in the writing office over there. Right. So, um, you know, they, they come at me. Like, I got this idea. And I, I just, yeah, the, uh, they, they wanted me to come over and work with um, Bubba. And, like, that was a great idea and stuff. But I really like what I'm doing with the kingdom. So, mm -hmm. and that was before Brooke started working with them because I think she's working with him right now. Right. But, you know, it just, for me, I like the kingdom. I like going over to New Japan. I like having nobody telling me where I can work. Yeah. So that's that's the best thing for me right now. Were, were you over there during uh, the uh, the Wrestle Kingdom pay-per-view? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So, so the uh, well, of course you were. Oh, the we Wrestle about? Kingdom pay per view in January. Yes. Sorry. Uh, no, I'm I sorry. Wasn't. The uh, no, 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 I wasn't. That was uh, because yeah, we were. I was. I must have spent like two hours doing like math equations, trying to figure out how to order it in English and get the and watch it live <laughs> and be able to review it. And uh, I was going back and forth with Jeff Jarrett trying to like get all the directions of how to tell everyone how to download it and everything. Oh goodness. <laughs> or I don't know if it, it might have been Jeff, it might have been whoever helps him, I don't know. But uh it was it was a lot of fun. But it was a great show. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. Um what do you feel about uh cuz we've talked about ROH kind of TNA WWE a little bit. Um and I'll get back to WWE, but what about uh are you watching Lucha Underground any of that stuff? I'm not um just be, I haven't had time to. Right. I'm in school right now, so it's like I have to pick and choose. Right. Um, but I hear good things, yeah. and I've worked for Mark Burnett before, so mm -hmm. I'm sure that he's doing great things over there with it. Right. Okay. I have no idea what's going on with that right now. Right. So, um, yeah, I just read something on about Total Divas and how Brie wants to have babies, and who knows right. if that's true. You know. I watched <laughs> that. I at first I go, I'm not watching that, and then I think my my uh, my wife was watching it. And I go, oh, that's it. I'm sucked in. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Um, and the WrestleMania behind the scenes uh, with the Ultimate oh. Warrior with Jim, that was just amazing. Oh, my that, gosh. We watched oh. that. Um, what is it? WrestleMania 24. What is it? Oh, that, the new one, the 24. WrestleMania yeah, 24. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was fantastic. How do you feel about the uh, WrestleMania logo change? And they're not going to, I mean, this is a, quite a little thing, but there's no numbers anymore. There's just going to be a logo. Of uh -huh. wherever they are play, so I'm I've been calling it WrestleMania play button. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> like this year it's a play button, next year it's a Levi's or something. I don't know. It's kind of strange, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, is it because Undertaker is no longer the streak has been broken? Is that like why they changed everything? Or I don't, I don't know. know. That just seems very strange to me. I got. I think it's. I, I maybe it's just marketing, and they're like people don't know what these these numerals are anymore. So let's drop that, mm -hmm. and we'll put the logo yeah. up. They'll visually. They could have just used regular numbers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> even that. Believe me, believe it or not, that that pissed me off. Uh, was it WrestleMania twenty three or tw twenty one or something had numbers, and even that, I was like, no, you got to have the Roman numerals. <laughs> and now your mind is just blown. Well, I'll be sitting here, and something will be. We'll have to read Roman numerals, and I'll be like, oh, that's twenty five. And then Leah, my wife, will be like, how the heck do you know that? I'm like, oh, because 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 of wrestling, WWE, you know. Point. This year's Royal Rumble, I wasn't. Usually, no. I love the Royal Rumble. Me too. This year, I was like, ah, come on. Right. Um, Who'd you I want mean, to win? You know what? I didn't really care who won. Mm -hmm. I just I wanted. I like all the different interactions and the creativity that goes into the Royal Rumble. It started really great. Right. It really did, and then it kind of fizzled at the end. Yeah. Um, I think that the title match that night was awesome. It was. Um, the the three way like it was fantastic. That that was the match of the night. Right. Um, but this year Rumble wasn't my favorite. But um, uh, Kofi definitely. I always look forward to whatever he's gonna do. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I was. I'm pumped. He's he's very entertaining. And uh, something else that was entertaining in that podcast that we talked about the the podcast and Triple H and Stone Cold and what they said. Um, what did you think about? Uh, do you do you think uh, based off that that China? will ever go into the Hall of Fame and were you a, a fan of China, you know, back in the day? Um I I'm a fan of powerful women. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty much a fan of any woman that comes into this business just because it's such a difficult thing to to be able to be one of those very few women that come into this business. Right. Um but I think that maybe it is a possibility. They have put aside a lot of the past hatred for different guys so i think that it could happen for sure are you f are you aware of uh the comments that sh that she made on uh her interview with vince russo recently no i didn't okay so <laughs> am i gonna put my foot in my mouth <laughs> no well it well a lot of people don't it hasn't made the rounds i don't think 100 percent yet but uh yeah. They were. This all sounded. I was in the same opinion that you just had, and but then uh, she went and made a video, and she stated that you know he had assaulted her, uh, or or hit her, and uh, all this stuff, uh, you know, and and then Triple H said that didn't happen. That's a that's a lie, oh, and she wow. said this on Vince Russo's uh, pod uh, his podcast uh, during a video. So now I was like, well. I you know I don't know well, if it's going to happen. Yeah, now, yeah, now that that's been mentioned. Um so then yeah, that I mean 
the thing is, is we all come out of WWE on fire. Like right. we are, you know, we've been on the road for so long and you're just tired and grizzled and angry and, you know, how dare they release me and all this right. stuff. And you go through that. You do. Oh, yeah. And then eventually everybody kind of calms down. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's the part I think I've seen with every single person that I knew in WWE and now outside of WWE. And that's unfortunate that, you know, that has happened with China and stuff. Um, and if if she was abused, then, you know, definitely her story should be out there. But I don't I don't know those facts. So um, but I do know that a lot of times we come out of WWE angry and on fire. And, you know, a few years later, you you look back and you have appreciation for the things that you were able to accomplish. Right. Well, that's 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 good advice. And uh, that's why I think it's so shocking that she brought that up so much years later. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's almost like they took a dig on her and then she took a dig on her. I don't know if he had something to work out with Russo that was yeah. to say something crazy or something. I don't, I don't know. know. That's wild. Um, I, I think we got to most of the other stuff that I wanted to mention. But what do you think of the WWE Divas division like right right now as it is? What do you think uh, of it now? And, and if you were there, you know, what, what do you think you would do different if there was anything you would? Um. Like if I if I was there as a talent or if yeah. I was there if you're in the divas uh, division as a talent now I mean who would you wanna wanna face and and I mean what do you think of how it is now Um I think that the girls are starting to get a whole lot of time on television which is the only way that you can possibly improve Yeah Um You know and and that's unfortunate about Roman Reigns too is like he he was on such a roll of you know having these matches and was starting to get the facial expressions there and then he had a couple flubs in front of the mic or on the mic and then right. everybody kind of turned on him um, and but the only way to succeed in this business is to really have that time and have that practice and so for the girls that's fantastic um, to to have that time and be able to really show off and then have total divas and be able to to show a little bit more of yourself and I I really think that that's the best way to, to improve. And um, I'm really impressed with a lot of the girls. I mean, I've been watching a lot of the NXT girls as they're coming up to the main roster, and they do really good work. And you can see that Sarah Del Rey's hands is just in there molding them all and, right. and uh, creating um, these fantastic workers. So I'm, I'm really impressed with the division. I really um, hope. I, I was huh. I was gonna say I really hope that they um, that the divas get a better push on Raw and Monday Night Raw because when you see what they can do down in NXT, it's maddening because Triple H. <laughs> oh, I know. Triple H made a comment the other day. It's a three-hour show. Sometimes it's tough to write for a three-hour show. You have to fill that time, and I don't exactly you know always enjoy the fact that we have to fill three hours. But then I see the women go out there for about five minutes, and it makes no sense. But then in NXT, Sasha Banks and Charlotte tear the house down on a pay per view or on a you know the special show, and it's like that can be done on Raw. We can get 25 minutes of that. These women can do this stuff. Why are they not getting it on Monday Night Raw? I don't understand it. Well, I mean, I think. I think NXT is a breeding ground. I think it's a place where people feel like they can screw up. And so then the higher ups also think it's a place that they can screw up. So they're not afraid. They say, go ahead, have, have fun, have at it, build your matches, do this. I think with WWE, because they have so many sponsors and you know, writers and producers and all these different people that they have to answer to, I think there's a lot of fear in mm -hmm. that. Um, so th they're always kind of pushing forward and pulling back all at the same time. You know, where is that? Where where can we take this? Right. Um, right. E NXT doesn't have that. You know, it's on the network. What, they can do what they want. <laughs> what's we what, what's weird to me though, like in saying that, is that on NXT in that match with Charlotte and Sasha Banks, I'll go into that match that happened a couple uh, weeks ago, and it was like a twenty minute something match, and they executed yeah. everything almost perfectly, mm -hmm. uh, and it was amazing. It blew my mind. It, you know, I mean, I was like, this is what I've been waiting for in WWE. TNA, TNA, ROH, companies like that have managed to pull this off all the time, um, but not here. But now you can see it in NXT. But then when they go up to the roster, they're given less maneuvers to do. Uh, the matches are shorter, but yet I see more botches there than in NXT. I see less botches. So I, that's why I don't understand um, why they can't just do it up at the main roster. And You know, you know I, I would have promos and stuff in WWE. Mm -hmm. 
and you can feel the weight of the world on you in right. WWE. Every the lights are brighter. I'm chilling. I'm in the ring. Okay, I can say whatever I want. No one's gonna cut my mic off. Everybody's just gonna be on the same page with me. I, I'm chilling when I'm in Ring of Honor. Yeah. Um, right. Would I be able to take that feeling up to WWE if I went back? You know, hypothetical. I go back to WWE. Could I take the way that I feel in Ring of Honor when I'm doing something I believe in? And going up to WWE and maybe not doing exactly what I believe in, could I take that calm with me? I don't know. I, it's it's night and day, though. Yeah. What what I feel at Ring of Honor is completely different than what I felt when I was in WWE. I, and I have a feeling that that's exactly what Charlotte feels. You know, when she goes up to WWE and has that what was like a three minute match or something that she had. Right. Um. So it's like. Eh, she probably feels that pressure, can't get that comfortability. Um, and I think it's possible to get that comfortability at WWE. I think it is It is there. That's why people like Punk can go and you know cruise the upper echelon and you have Daniel Bryan and he can cruise. Finding that calm, though, I think is very difficult when you have so many cooks in the kitchen. Well, I... Uh uh, speaking of punk, he's the only one left on my wall. I had, we used to ha we hung I up. I see that he's falling down. It's too. Ca it's kind of creepy. <laughs> I mean, I should take him down because you're here. Um, but no, the uh, the whole thing. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> I, I leave him. I leave him up here because he blocked me on Twitter. So I I just leave him up here as a reminder. <laughs> and Phil, by the way, I am watching you right now. Just so you know, I've got eyes on you. No, uh, no, we he made a joke. Uh, no, seriously, Phil. Uh, no, he's he's upset at me because of. Uh, because <laughs> I uh, I tweeted something and I shouldn't have tweeted it, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah, what did you tweet? You have to tell me now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was tweeting the uh, the wedding photo thing. Yes. And so I thought it was a news story, so I retweeted it too. But what I realized after was it was like a dude like going crazy on him and AJ and like putting all these weird things up. <gasps> and um, so I, I just was going through my phone with so many tweets that I just tweet 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 tweet. And uh, I tweeted that to him and to everybody. Uh, and then I went and looked at it and was like, oh, oh okay. And there oh, you go. No. So th th that that's what happened with me and me and uh, <laughs> sorry, punk. Uh, so he's oh, terrible. He's the only one left on my wall. But uh, sometimes I'm, I accidentally favorite stuff I don't mean to because it's yeah. so easy to do. So then I'm oh, like, yeah. no, I don't want to. And then they're like, they'll send me back a message and be like, "Thank you so much for favoriting my tweet." And I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I, I didn't even mean to." <laughs> I know I didn't know what I, I looked at it and was like, "That's actually mean." Actually, the what, what what whoever did this was a was it was disgusting. Like I looked at it and was like, "I'm a pretty I'm pretty edgy," but this was weird. Like this was yeah. I was like, "Oof, I don't know about that." And oh man, that's terrible. Our, our his his Blackhawks beat my Bruins in the in the Stanley Cup, so we're we're upset. Oh so. my Blackhawks. Oh yeah, that's right. You're Chicago too. That's right. You guys, you guys uh, surprised me and ripped my heart out. But it's okay because I liked Chicago, so I yeah. felt okay about it. If we had lost to Vancouver years before, I would have been very mad. But yeah, I was happy it was Chicago. I, I love Chicago. Did you ever go to the? Uh, I used to go to the Metro, and then Wrigley Field. And I go to the Metro to see bands play, and my band played in the Metro. Oh really? Yeah, it was. Awesome. Um, no, I um I've never been to the Metro, but I have been. Wrigley. Mm -hmm. I uh, actually uh, am a little bit torn right now because my husband is from you know outside of Boston, right. so you know he was very excited about his Bruins being oh, there. Yeah. And so I actually had to tell him to suck it after <laughs> uh, they won. But uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, but I do cheer on the Patriots because I think it's fantastic uh, that they won again, and um, th that whole debacle thing. I just don't agree with any of it. But um, right. Brady's a cool guy, so. Uh, good on them. I was broadcasting live during that, and I freaked out and uh, like a little kid, like like <laughs> Brady did. And uh, the NFL Network actually picked it up. A producer called me, was like, "Can we use the clip?" And I was like, "Yeah, go ahead." And then the phone just blew up, and it's me just screaming like a little girl right here in my little sort of studio set. <laughs> and the guys, the guy on the television said, um, Dar "Darris or I don't know what it is, Jarvis. I forget what his name is." And he said, uh, "Was that his mother's basement?" No, it's that guy's in his mother's basement because they showed all the Seahawks fans at a party, and here I am by myself screaming that we won, looking like a loser. 
Um, <laughs> Mike was doing the same thing. He was jumping up and down in the living room, like as uh, Butler got the yeah. uh, interception. Oh my god, so <laughs> funny! He was jumping up and down. I didn't think they had it. I really no. didn't. That was just a ridiculous play call at the end of the game. Oh. But then again, like the the way that the team acted about it after the game, they would have acted, and they acted like all of a sudden the Patriots score twenty points there at the end. Well, yeah. No, it was a close game. Like yeah. At any point, you could have pulled ahead, but you didn't. So, uh, yeah. whatever. Football. I was on the dance team in my high school. Yeah. So, we danced at all the football games. So, I had to learn everything that was going on at the football game. So, ever since then, I've been a huge football fan. Baseball, eh, whatever. But yeah. football, I'm a huge fan of. That's awesome. I, I do love football. I do love baseball. And I do love hockey. And uh, I'm insane. It's a sports house. So I can't help it. <laughs> Speaking, speaking of Mike, I, now that we know we get this this Boston connection and everything, a lot of the wrestlers do, you know, um, but uh, especially in the Northeast here. But how is you guys? Do you guys have? I the, are you still doing the podcast all the time, or is this? No, we um, I started up at school at Johnson and Wales, right. so I am uh, actually in college, college, like going forward, full oh, yeah. force. So it's been tough for me. It really has. Yeah. And, um, we figured it out today, and over the next 10 weeks, we don't have a weekend off, and then I'm also taking four classes, mm -hmm. so it's it's really tough. We're trying to figure out if we can do it again. Um, the podcast got so many good reviews. People liked it. Yeah. Um, we didn't always just talk wrestling, but um, I definitely miss it, and we love doing After Buzz, too. Yeah. We yeah. used to do After Buzz for Raw for Maria Menudo's mm -hmm. network, and um, it was just such a good group of guys, so... Maybe, maybe eventually we'll get back at it. <laughs> I was going to say it was. It's entertaining, but like you said, you get a lot on your plate. And After Buzz was great, too. I know some of the guys over at Screen Junkies are involved in that. Actually, one yeah. of the guys, the Honest Trailer guy, does our, our voiceover. So that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. There's a little connection. Um, uh, what else do I get? If I don't answer all, you know, I'll get hate mail or something if I don't start asking <laughs> questions. Uh, somebody wanted to know, really know, we kind of talked about CM Punk a little bit. And uh, what do you think about what he did, leaving the WWE and UFC. Did you ever think that you would, did you know or ever think that he was going to compete in the UFC? Um, no or compete in the UFC? No. Um, did I think that he would leave WWE that way? Yeah. I had a hunch. Right. Um, just, uh, just because he is a very, um, strong person. Right. Um, and when you beat someone up like that for so long, Without a break, mm. without a, you know, without some humanity, I think, I, I think it takes a toll. I I did that schedule, but I didn't do it as long as he did, and right. he also did the independence for ten or eleven years before he ever got to WWE. So your body gets beat up, and all these people that want to criticize him for that, yeah. I try it. it one weekend, right? Try it, right? Try taking the bumps for one weekend. Um, you know. I, so I, I had a hunch that, you know, if things went awry, he would just be like, okay, that's enough. Right. It's enough. And it's, um, you don't see, you don't always see everyone else do that. But like you said, his, his, uh, his amount of time in the business, independence and getting called up and all that stuff and what has been done to him. And, uh, some of the stuff he mentioned, I know a lot of people in the WWE has mentioned, I never heard that, you know, Triple H likes to, a lot of times he says, I never heard this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I, I don't think he was dealing directly with punk a lot. Um, but that's just me guessing. I don't know. Um, why do sometimes other people seem to just let it roll off their back and they just continue? Whereas, like you said, he's just because he's a strong person. Or do you think he really wasn't getting listened to? Kind of like how you mentioned, you know, you've brought up WWE Divas in the past. And now all of a sudden it's out there where he kind of mm -hmm. mentioned, I brought up doing endorsements on my, bo on my trousers and, you know, coming up with something with UFC. And they said, no, we're not doing that. But then Brock Lesnar comes in and it's okay. Was there a lot of that kind of double standard there's um, there's definitely the top guys. Um, there's, I think some people's voices get heard more than others, but that's in any business, right? You know, that's anywhere you go, that's going to happen. Um, but it does happen, yeah. and it's also timing, and it has a lot to do with timing. Right place, right time, and and it'll be yours, right? Um, and and you never know what might be coming down the pike either. So, yeah, I, I do think that happens a lot, but I think it happens anywhere in the entertainment business. <laughs> right. <laughs> it happens everywhere in life. Uh, yeah, most and definitely. Is there any regrets that you have from WWE that you would have wished you did before you left? 
Um, oof. Uh, you know, I really wanted to move further into the wrestling side. I mean, right. I always kind of teetered. I would, I would do a little, and then they'd pull me away from it. Um, because I could interview and announce and be a manager and do all those things. There was a lot of different things that were occupying my time yeah. when I was at WWE. So I didn't always get to focus on wrestling. Right. And there was a time there that we started to have me focus on wrestling, and then I got pulled away from it again. And I really wish that I had more, um, more of a focus on the wrestling side for a longer period of time when I was there. But you know, then again, um, I got to do a lot of cool stuff. I got yeah. to work with everybody. Um, if I wasn't a manager, I wouldn't have gotten to work with you know, Cena and Edge and. Uh, Ric Flair and I worked with Kurt Angle and you know uh, Umaga and all these different guys I got to work with because I was that damsel in distress right, right. Um, so as much as I would have liked to get more in the wrestling ring who knows if I would have done that then maybe I would have said oh I wish I could have worked with DX which I got to do right you know so right, <laughs> it's like right. which, which side do you choose and um so even though like there are things that I really wish I would have had more time for, um, I am really happy with what I got to do. Um, looking back on it now, when I first came out, angry, angry, crazy lady, right. and now uh, it was awesome. You yeah, know? I got to do a lot. Uh, well, I'll never. Uh, what I want to know is, was that real poop that landed on Carly's head in that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I that is the one of the funniest things still to this day. I, I go back and watch that promo for that. Was it WrestleMania? I think it was. WrestleMania, yeah. The damn bird. That was great. I, I love when they're mixing poop on set. That's my favorite thing. Blood and poop. Whenever people have to mix those things on set on a movie or on you know at WWE. So is there a designated like poop concoction? Is there a designated poop mixer? I yeah, mean, there's a designated there's a person. It's a special effects person that knows the right consistency, and I just want to know how do you know what the right consistency of bird poop is or oh. of, of dog poo or blood like well how do you know this <laughs> they've got stuff at their house that you don't want to know about i think that's what it is <laughs> oh i know how to make that exactly. <laughs> earwax yeah i know that too um <laughs> i know we're getting close to the end here but uh oh out of all the divas um the were the that you were involved with who was your favorite person to work with I'm, i don't know if i asked you that and I, I wanted to get that out there oh um i loved working with beth phoenix i loved working with victoria um i actually after i hadn't wrestled for two years um once i left wwe i asked if i could work with her um on the first match i had back mm -hmm. um and i'm always begging to work with victoria and uh, it doesn't always work out that way, but I loved working with her. She's amazing. No, that's cool. The uh, how many times did you get to work with her? Was it only a few times, right? Um, a few times there, but a lot of times when we were on the road. Oh, right. So I mean, a few times on TV, but they're much almost every weekend when <laughs> when she was still there. <laughs> I assume it's much more. I mean, unless they're building a storyline, you know, where they're putting two people together and you're going to wrestle 17 times on the road in the house show to build up to the pay per view or to the show or whatever they're doing. Are they? Is it more lax on the on the road where they can kind of just throw some names together? Mm -hmm. That happens a lot more often. You oh, can for sure, yeah, yeah, for sure, and um, that's when you can have a lot of fun too. Right, right. You know? I mean, you can I, just... I've been told that like there's been a lot of really good female matches on the road that we don't necessarily get to see on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. I want to see them on Raw. I'm really, I'm really fighting for that. I enjoyed the TNA Knockouts uh, mm -hmm. matches for years. I the Beautiful People I think was one of the the, the one of the best uh, female stables in a long time. I love those girls. Yeah. They had good music. Which uh, I think sometimes TNA needs a little bit better music, but what what's coming up for you in ROH and in, in New Japan now? What's 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 the future looking for? Looking like? Um, I actually have a match coming up. It's right. the first match I've had in probably six months. Right. A little nerve wracking. Been yeah. training a bit, but uh, yeah, I'm wrestling ODB at our pay per view in awesome. Las Vegas. That's right. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be the first time I have a singles match in front of the Ring of Honor crowd. So we'll see how they take it. People always get mad at me. Like, what are you going to do? Family members. 
oh, so when are you flying? And I'm like, oh, Friday. <laughs> well, what time? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> so people are like, eh, well, you don't know when you're flying? No, I don't know when I'm flying. What's the uh, what's one of the worst things that ever happened to you? And what, one of the worst and best things that ever happened to you while on the road, traveling? Like, whether it's a fan interaction or an event or something went wrong, something went right? Uh, Triple H bought me a pizza. That's cool. Time. It was amazing. Yeah, I... Uh, you know, I'm sure people have experienced this before. You get on the road, mm -hmm. spend money in another town, all of a sudden your credit card shut off. Right. Um, and so here I am. I'm in the lobby of the hotel. My pizza's there. I'm there. I have my card. <laughs> no phone on me. I left my phone in my room. And my car's not going through. And... I'm like, okay, I, I don't know what else to do. And Triple H turns around, pays for my pizza. It's okay. <laughs> Sends, and then I go up to my room, eat my delicious <laughs> pizza. And uh, yeah, that was the coolest thing that ever happened was he bought me a pizza. I don't know why when you said that, like the the motorhead just came on and he came in like wearing dominoes. <laughs> and he, <laughs> That's great. Let's, well, I guess we'll... Wonderful. And then uh, Batista bought uh, dinner for my mom on her birthday. Oh yeah, that's cool. So. Yeah. yeah you know, just, I, I, things like this, these stories, and, and people have to remember sometimes wrestlers are humans. You know, like uh, a lot of people on here and they'll flip out and I hate this guy, I hate that guy. I heard he does this, heard he they do that. You know, and do you ever read these things and you're just like, you know, you can't even think about it because it's so crazy? Yeah, I try, I try to stay away from um, a lot of the negativity and stuff like that. Um, but I do read it, I, I see it. And, I always try and remind people, you know, think about when you're on your worst day. Think about when you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. Some your your employer just gave you bad news. Just put a bunch of work back on your desk that you have to do. Your wife is at home complaining about who knows what. Right. And then someone calls you and asks you for one more thing. How right. do you react? Right. Uh, are you the nicest person in the world? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. You're probably biting your lip and you're trying real hard to be nice, but times that by also being really, really sore. Right. Someone just punched you in the face, for reals, yep. on accident. Yep. But y your face is hurting and your back hurts. and You gotta get on a plane and fly You gotta get on country. a plane and then you go home yeah. to the lady that was just screaming at you for three days. You right. know? It seems like, oh, you're making all this money. It's great, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But as money does not take away pain. It never will. You want it to, but it just doesn't. Right. Um, so people are human. People, people are human. And um, that's, that's another thing. When you, when you grow up, you, you learn that, that, you know, it's just, uh, it's just how it is. Is there um? And so, I mean, as far as the roads, uh, the, the way you used to travel in WWE, um, is it hard coming off of that? Because a lot of times you feel almost like you're being plopped in a place and given stuff, and or, or no, it's not like that at all. Um, coming off the road from WWE? Yeah, being a transitioning from just being back on the, you know, the in, kind of the independent circle. Oh, okay. Um, WWE never paid for my hotels. Mm -hmm. um, they flew me in, and then I took care of my car, my hotel, yeah. uh, my food, all of that kind of stuff. Ring of Honor, I get flown into the town. They have a car waiting. They mm -hmm. pay for my hotel. <laughs> it's so funny. That's so back. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. I go on the road and yeah. it's like literally all I got to do is walk with my bags to wherever this rental car is that there's a bunch of us all in and they've paid for it. And then that rental car just takes me to the hotel, which Ring of Honor paid for. <laughs> and I don't think about anything. That's awesome. Um, it's it's incredible. It's so nice to be treated that way. It's nice to not have to worry about, you know, finding a hotel and finding a car and finding a this. They already took care of it. And um, for me, that's it's a great feeling. It really is. And I wish I would have had that in WWE. <laughs> it should have been that way. They're a multi-million dollar company. Right. Uh, close to, I think it's like $750 million or something they have. So... 
It Did, should they should have taken care of my hotel. <laughs> <laughs> you think their mentality is just that you make a, you make more money now, so you can probably just yeah. pay for this. It's like a restaurant saying you'll get tips. Yeah. So it's um it's interesting because I think I make the same amount almost. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the Indies, I think I still yeah. Oh. But because I had to pay for hotels and yeah. cars and everything, you know, so it's like give and take. They really, um, they've, but, what, yeah, they figured it out over there. Then I guess how to <laughs> how to do it. <laughs> Unless you can claw your way through and make the fans love you so much that they'll chant your name the whole pay per view if you don't get on the show or something. You know, the way things are going now. <laughs> well, Maria, thank you very much uh, for for joining us here. Of course, of course. I hope I answered all your questions. Yeah, I think I got them all. I wish I had uh, more of them, actually, for you. Maybe we'll do it again uh, some other time, too. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks for having me. You can get Maria's merchandise and T-shirts at the same place you can get the Joe Cronin Show T-shirts, ProWrestlingTees.com. Go check it out and check out JoeCronenShow.com for more videos, more entertainment, and of course right here on YouTube.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Over 5 million views and 11,000 subscribers. I am the king of kayfabe, ladies and gentlemen, and this is JoeCronenShow.com. Wrestling talk with attitude. Watching The Joe Cronin Show.